We share radio. Spread the word, spread the word. Connecting the We Share community around the world. We share radio. It's actually a tangible way of changing our lives. <laughs> And we're back for another We Share Radio and our POC 21 special as Justina guides a very blind Bernie Mitchell through the uh, through the tunnels of make a verse. So uh, in the last episode, we spoke about what open source is and Linux and how that, all, all that fits together. So definitely go back and listen to that. And now um, I, I just want to ask quiz Justina on how POC came about. It's really, really exciting. There's a movie which we'll put a, a link in the show notes of every episode that you can watch, um, which tells a story. But where, where did the idea actually come from? And, and good morning, Justina. So I always forget that. Yak Sumash. <laughs> hey, Bernie. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, yeah, glad to, be, uh, glad to be talking to you. It's actually a good exercise for me to, uh, you know, explain things. Um, I don't actually have that much occasion to explain my my head, you know, what's happening in my head to others apart from giving talks that are very often very you know, scripted. So, yeah. So what do you want to know? How how talk came together? Yeah, is, is it something you've been wanting to do for years and years and years? And, you know, who, who were the... I can only speak there. for myself. You know, I will. I will try to uh, tell a few stories at the same time and, and, and be quick. Um, but I will mainly speak for, from my point of view. But you know, what was we call it co-founded. Idea came from you know five people. So uh, me. Well, I should not start by myself. <laughs> uh, Benjamin from from Weisher being my um, kind of Weisher partner in crime, and three guys from Germany from a. Uh, a collective called Open State, Dominic Vent, um, Daniel, and Simon. Um, and we can all had uh, similar things happening in our heads. Kind of, we all were thinking already along the same uh, narrative, but uh, we were kind of tackling it from different, you know. We were entering through different doors, having different uh, experiences and different jobs that we were doing before. So, you know, for, for, for me, it was just like an evolution of an idea uh, that I had for a very long time that's very much linked with, um, you know, fab labs, um, which are those, you know, fabrication facilities or, or, or other called, you know, different sorts of maker spaces. And particularly my crush that I had on a, a location uh, in Barcelona that's called um, Valdalia, which is basically like a really cool um, green fab lab. It's a, it's a you know, hacker space or maker space. It is exactly a fab lab um, that is focusing on um, you know, sustainability and kind of links technology and uh, sustainability. And I really wanted to kind of implement this uh, in, in different locations and in a way support those guys because, you know, it's not that easy to run uh, such a place. And, you know, WikiHow has been uh, an open source uh, hardware project that sometimes, for me personally, kind of talking to people, I had a hard time explaining what it was because it was like, oh, so you're open source, and you know, but why are you open source? How do you make money? You know, people had a hard time invest, thinking about investing their does, time does and it, money. Does it, does it get a bit boring answering that question all the time? Open source, how do you make money? Yeah, it does, but but there is no answer like there is the whole so you earn this this and you have to you know develop that so you know we are testing so it the answer changes every time so i said well you know how can you and i met the person that was um an owner of a castle <laughs> in the french countryside who was very much supporting you know all those things and i say hey how about you know trying to develop this green fab lab idea into um you know in a castle 
and I talked about that concept with my friend Dan, uh, who has already been in touch with the boys from from Open Saints. They had, you know, there are those guys in Germany that are kind of you know, trying to do a, a similar thing. How about we, we work with them on that? And then we all kind of realized that there is this big thing called COP21, which is the climate conference that took place in Paris uh, last December, um, November, November, December. And we were like, well, you know, all those people that are going to come together and talk about climate issues that are flying from all those countries, um, you know, what are they going to really actively do? But then we kind of say, well, but we can in a way, bring together all the people we know or we heard of or we can, you know, reach um, and invite into a location that will, you know, uh, help them improve what they're already working on and, you know, help communicate uh, to a big public and take part in an active way in this uh, climate discussion. And then we kind of mixed all our ideas together, you know, the Green Fab Lab, this beautiful venue that was uh, the 20th century castle, uh, all the networks we've had, uh, so, you know, all the open source and hardware network with Reacher Network and um, German uh, more uh, NGOs connections. And we built this in innovation camp um, around open source uh, green tech. So, how, how long did it take to? I think it took a year, but like, how long did it take to get from yeah. like let's do this to we're standing in the castle ready to go? <laughs> a little bit more than a year. It was, um, yeah, a little bit more than a year. But let's just make it simple. At the very beginning, it was just five people being extremely determined that they will, you know, raise one million in a year. <laughs> And then slowly um, getting, you know, more and more stress while the funding was not necessarily uh, coming in as quickly as, as uh, hoped for. Into building the team once the funding got uh, somehow fixed. Uh, building a team and, you know, from five going into uh, the team of 30 and then during five weeks into a team of 100. I took you know, exactly a year with like the growth uh, of the team. Uh, the closer we were getting, in, you know, to the event itself, the the, the more we were in a team. So, uh, did you, did you have to raise a million euros to get it going, or did you? How, how, how did, that, <laughs> did you did you meet? You met someone with a castle, and then you met someone with a million euros, and then it that was it. Yeah, <laughs> well, the castle was. For sure, something. Well, we we rented the castle, so it was a very good communication, you know, tool because it's just it's beautiful. Uh, and so the castle was a good start because we had a good price for for what it was. And then we had to uh, convince basically uh, as many people we could to become partners for the project. So yeah, we had to basically pitch. Uh, open source hardware uh, cam um, to people that sometimes never heard about neither open source, uh, you know, nor did they think about COP21 before. And then slowly uh, finding, you know, foundations uh, and uh, companies and uh, public convincing public uh, institutions. We did raise around 900. Uh, thousand euros, uh, and part of the money was in kind sponsorships uh, through the Fab Lab, being you know machinery, tools, and materials. So it was around nine hundred thousand euros. That that sounds. Uh, must, I imagine that, that that feels like it could have been really hard work going around pitching people and trying to get the idea going. Like when I've had, I never had to raise that much, but whenever I've had to raise anything, it's that's the bit I find exhausting and yeah, quite dark. I did, that was, 
It is. And, you know, I'm not a fundraising expert. Ben is really good at that. Um, and, but I've learned, we all learned, like five of us, Simon, uh, Dominic, Daniel, me, we all had to... Uh, but as we really believed in what we were doing, and I think what we were doing was never been done before, and what we were doing was just a positive answer to a very depressing topic um, and a call for action and something tangible, and it had 12 projects that were being accelerated, and the outcomes were very sure um, it was pretty, finally, at the end, when you think about that, it was not that hard because we kind of managed to uh, to raise the money, but we were also offering something pretty incredible, which was basically bringing people for five weeks and funding their prototypes, giving them the, the tools um, that they needed, uh, giving them the you know, mentorship uh, that they couldn't have gotten a uh, different location, uh, feeding them and giving them accommodation for, for free. Um, yeah, so that is a lot that we were offering. So did did, did people, in, is, is invest the right word? Did people invest or sponsor it because they were, like I would have given you money because I'm so pissed off with the people who meet in COP21, you know, for the last 20 years talking about how to not screw up the world and they still haven't managed to do anything. So I would have, I would have, there would, there would have been, maybe it's a, neg- a negative emotion, but there would have been a, re- a sort of form of retaliation there of like, I'd much rather give you, you know, invest in what you're doing than invest in another champagne party and limousine in there. <laughs> in- well, I'm not that negative. I mean, I really, really appreciate, you know, what, like, COP21 is about, and I think it's a job for those people, you know, I, I'm perfectly, you know, fine with what they I don't want to even touch, uh, you know, the complexity of the political and things that are happening out there, but um, I, I think being able to see tangible things and um, young people being positive about um, that topic and sort of a uh, this ber- birthplace of a, of a, of a maker l- lifestyle that what we were suggesting was not, you know, some might consider it being an activism. Yeah, it is a form of an activism. Someone would consider it, you know, alternative. Someone would consider it, you know, um, you know there's hippies or there's anarchists. I don't know. But actually what we were uh, doing was just a very normal thing and we were treating it as a normal thing and we were talking about it like you know it's not our alternative it's the new normal and we're saying hey what you know just talking about this and being uh, active it is just cool and normal and i think giving this uh, normality uh, feeling to all that what was uh convincing quite a lot of people because we were not those. Um, you have to now feel guilty for all those things that you do wrong every day. It's like, well, please try to understand how things work. Uh, and once you're gonna understand how they work, you're gonna uh, your your way of thinking is gonna change, and you're gonna be more responsible. And also by understanding how how things work, you can improve them. And if you improve, then you can share your improvement with everybody else. I think that that's a really good way of putting it because I, I don't feel, I, I don't feel like the thing, things like pop get it get it confusing. The things like pop twenty one and looking at all the photos and watching the video and everything, it, it reminds me of my you know my parents and my grandparents who used to fix things like used to fix cars and make things and my yeah. you know, my uncle would would grow both my uncle all my uncles actually and my grandparents were really good at gardening and i don't even you know i remembered it when i was a child but i don't remember you know yeah. let's go to the supermarket now and it's getting more connected with doing <laughs> doing stuff and the and the you know the journey of 
your food and equipment? Yeah, it, 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 I, you know, when I think about that, and the more you know, I mean, it's quite scary. The more you know, the more questions you're asking yourself, and you go like, oh, yeah, but why that? Why does it work that way? You know, but why does my computer run on electricity? Why doesn't it work on, I don't know, uh, nitrogen? <laughs> you know, there are so many ways of producing energy um, different than, you know, just producing electricity. Um, you know, there are so many questions you're going to ask yourself and you're going to become curious about the world around you. You will not be this. This is what talk was about by being, you know, Busting curiosity in the society and changing us from, you know, trying to change us from being this uh, a, a passive consumer that, you know, listens to uh, what people say is, you know, the best product with, you know, the most known uh, actor on the, uh, on the advertisement to, hey, well, how does that work and how am I getting this coffee on my table you know when where does the coffee beans come from something like this and then trying to once understand shower loop for example it's a good example shower loop being this circular um, shower that is reusing the same water in a closed cycle once you understand this and you go like well but then why does my sink you know, work the same way? Why doesn't it my, my toilet work the same way? And then you start to see everything that's behind the front end and you kind of start to understand what's happening on the back end of, of things. And then you can, yeah, just, and then you can suggest how things may work so that it works good for your needs. So how did you end up in this world of because there's a, I've always thought you've got a huge curiosity about you. And how did you get into the making things, finding out how things work and gluing things together? And... I always was. It's, um, you know, when I was a little girl, my dad, um, well, the first toys I had was not a Barbie doll, was a little battery and a little light bulb. And I would spend so much time, uh, you know, connecting this stupid little light bulb with this little, you know, battery. Hey, hey, lights on. And because my dad is a sort of an inventor. So I say sort of an inventor because he's a weekend inventor. Um, and like, because I'm from Poland. So for those of you that don't know when I, because I'm born in 83. So when I was born, it was still communism in Poland. And, you know, we were kind of late to the story with, of, of consumer, uh, consumerism. Um, and when the first TVs came to the, on the market, you know, they were so expensive in Poland that my dad just decided to build their, his own TV. So he would just, like, build TVs at home. Wow. And while he was building TVs, I was sitting next to my dad. And I was like, hey, dad, what's that? And then he would just give me, you know, when I was like four, I would be soldering stuff with my dad. And, you know, that was just something that I've learned since I was a little kid was knowing how a TV is built. Or uh, my dad would just, you know, those dads that are like my divers. Yep. Yeah. So that was my dad. And then I was the little MacGyver. That's I'm, how I got into that. I'm, I'm always very, always feel very inadequate next to my my dad around this because he can, you know, like he's yeah. just 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 in this area because he can take an engine apart and put it back together again, yeah. and it's always fixing always fixing the car. I think he actually likes breaking the car so he can fix it. But you know, <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm only just plucking up the energy to drill a hole to put a curtain up in our house. So um, I'm, we're gonna we're gonna draw this episode to a close now and. Yeah. We will. So, just just to be really open source with you, the listener, we're going to go away, listen to this, and then I'm going to come back with some more questions and continue our story with um, Justina. Where, where's the just? Well, people are listening. Where's the best place to find you? Or what are you doing at We Share Fest? Uh, what's what's the next point of connection with what you're doing? 
Well, uh, I think Wisher Fest is a good one. Um, so I will be somewhere around what we call the Fest Forward, which is um, a part of Wisher Fest, which is accelerating um, uh, open source uh, projects uh, that have social impact. So I will be really glad to meet people at Wisher Fest. And before, for those who are um, around the Lille in France, it's going to be sharing Lille on the 21st of, of April. And soon in London, I hope. Yeah, always welcome here at WorkHubs or 90 Main Yard. <laughs> But we'll, um, I'll put a link to the show notes and that. Thanks for listening, everyone, and um, tune in to other episodes. And we'll be back with Justina in a couple of weeks. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.